The following video you'll see is a condensed version of a stream I did for a dance animation loop tutorial. I'll be starting up an independent creator support system where my viewers will have access to archives of lessons and streams that I did in the past. But for now, enjoy this condensed version. Hey guys, it's Tiniko Pantoa, and today I'm going to show you guys how I animate dance loops, like how I animated these three dancing dogs. And they're all dancing to a beat of a song. Now, the thing about these dances is that they're cycles, or loops, meaning that it's the same animation that's playing on repeat over and over again. Now, each dog has their own unique dance, or their own unique loop. One being basic and on beat, another being very sporadic and wild, one being robotic and stiff, the other being more advanced and technical. Now for this video, I want to talk about how I go about animating these dance loops, and I'm going to animate something that's similar to our first dancing dog, which is something that's basic, it's on beat. If you think about it, it's really just a bouncing ball, but on beat. So if you're familiar with my process of animation, I usually try to get the feeling of the animation more so than making sure it's technically right. Because I want to be sure that I have my creative choices set and my ideas down before I start figuring out the mechanics of the animation. Take this one example of a character dancing. I'm really just figuring out the up and down poses, kind of like a bouncing ball. My up pose, the character in the air, the character hitting the ground. Now, I'm not super worried about being technical or figuring out the mechanics here. I want to make sure the creative choices and my ideas are down before I figure that stuff out. You know, I just make some rough gesture of what I want. I would time it then, making sure the rhythm feels right, things are on beat. It's basically animated at this point. I would do another pass on top of it, maybe making the drawings a bit more clearer, a bit more solid, and now I can start thinking about the mechanics. I'm just going to draw over the poses that I have. Maybe making adjustments to it, making sure it's on proportions to the character that I want to animate. And then once I have that figured out, then I can start in-betweening it. I can start adding breakdowns. I can start adding drawings that describe how one pose transitions to the other. Until I have something that's still relatively rough, but you can tell the movement is there, the description is there, and it bears resemblance to the character. And then from then, I can tie it down, I can clean up the drawing so it's more on model, maybe it's fully in between at this point. But yeah, I just wanted to highlight how I generally animate because it's what I'm going to prioritize throughout this video. So feel free to join me on this one. We're going to animate a character from scratch dancing to a beat. So if you're animating to music, whether you're animating a dance or someone singing, it's good to have a song in mind and have a sound clip of that sound file in your animation. One thing that I would recommend doing as a form of practice is to animate uh, some form of visual metronome. So for this case, I'm animating a bouncing ball that's on beat to the music. So I have to keep listening to the track or the song that I'm animating to on loop and then animate a simple bouncing ball trying to match the beat of the music. It doesn't have to be a bouncing ball, it could just be like a red dot that flickers every time it hits a beat. But imagine if you're not animating a loop, it's a long take of a character, maybe the character is like, you know, dancing to the beat while moving from one room to the other or acting to the music. It's good to sort of have an idea of where those beats land with a looping visual metronome. So here's an older animation that I did with a character playing her guitar. I sort of made a bouncing ball that kind of represented her hand strumming the guitar. Now, you can go the extra mile of figuring out how many beats there are per minute and then translate that into frames per second. As you can see here, I'm trying to figure out my beats per minute and then I take whatever number I have into a calculator that converts that into frames per second. Now, you don't have to do this. This is just something that's, you know, food for thought. You could find a way to translate that into your animation timeline. You could like, let's say, notate when the beats happen in your timeline. That's really up to you. So this is just another thing to keep in mind. But I do think it's important to have a song in mind that you're going to animate to. But you know, instead of trying to figure out the beats per minute and then trying to convert that into frames per second, you could just animate a bouncing ball and then make that ball bounce on the beat of the music that you're using and then put that on the side somewhere in your animation and use that as reference for the beat. That could be your visual metronome at that point. All right, so I'm going to animate my little cat character just doing a little bob, just bouncing up and down to the beat of the music that I have playing in my mind. So I'm listening to Eye of the Tiger, for example. Now I've taken an average estimate of when the beat happens. It usually happens every 13 frames. 
So by frame 13, the loop just goes back to the first frame that I have. But between 1 and 13, or between this whole cycle, a beat happens wherever you want to put it. So usually in this case, I'm going to put a down pose somewhere in between my first key and my last key. So for shits and giggles, I'm going to put my down pose of my cat just bobbing up and down at frame 9, and I'm just throwing it out there. So by frame 9, this is when the character dips down. This is when the character bends its knees, lowers its stand. I'm making the arms raise to imply there's a bit of gravity and that the arms are a bit weightless at this point. We have a bit of storytelling there. And now I'm going to add breakdowns between my up and down poses and my down and up poses. So, you know, a breakdown again is a drawing or a key pose that describes how one key pose transitions to the next key pose. Like it describes what's leading the animation, the head of the character, the body of the character. Is there a bit of an overlap? Is there a bit of secondary motion that we might need to consider? So from frame one to frame nine, the character is going down, but I want it to slow out, meaning it's easing in, it's gaining speed. So I'm going to put my breakdown right before nine and then doing all my in-betweens in reverse so the spacing gets smaller and smaller as I do in-betweens getting closer to one. Frame 11 is my breakdown from, you know, its down pose back to its up pose. So for this one, I'm having the arms snap back down. Now that the character's body is going up, the arms are going to come down, giving that sense of overlapping motion. So I'm just going to play it with our key poses, no in-betweens. And, you know, we can kind of get a sense that the character is bobbing up and down to a certain beat. Okay, I'm just gonna in between it just so that we can see it in motion. And now we have a character that's just standing still, but it's bobbing up and down. So what I just showed you is me animating a very, very simple dance loop, a simple dance cycle. It's not really a complicated dance. It's not really a unique dance. It's really just a character bobbing up and down. But that's basically the thing I'm trying to get at. It's I'm thinking of it like a bouncing ball. But I took the bouncing ball concepts to a character just bobbing up and down. Now the reason why I just animated a character like this just bobbing up and down is because this is going to be my visual reference and my visual metronome at the same time. So, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same animation, I'm going to turn down the opacity, and now I'm going to animate a completely different cycle on top of this reference because the reason why I animated this reference is so that I can track my proportions, my character design, my timing, etc. So on a new layer, now I'm adding more unique or specific poses. I'm having a character flail its arms or kick on the air and then having the head tilt sideways here and there. Now I'm not using any reference, I'm just having fun at this point. So for this case, I'm really just going to figure out all my main key poses rather than trying to figure out the motion. So, you know, I'm having my reference layer, the thing that we animated earlier on as my reference for the loop. So I'm going to start adding key poses. Now in my first pass, my first reference layer, I only just animated one cycle. So for this one, I'm going to animate multiple cycles where the character is doing multiple different dance moves, but at the end of the day, it's going to loop back to frame one. So as you can see here, I'm animating all my up and down key poses first, and I just figured out I'm just going to space them out evenly as sixes. Each drawing is going to hold for about six frames in a 24 frames per second setting. So how do I know this? How do I know my timing? Well, it's because I've already animated a simple dance loop that I'm using right now. It's looping throughout my entire animation. Although I'm adding new drawings, I'm still trying to match the timing of my up and down poses in my original reference. So when the character is squashed or in a down pose in my reference, I'm going to make sure I'm hitting that in my new animation, changing the orientation of the pose, maybe changing the orientation of the arms and legs or the overall gesture to give it more flavor. Okay, so I'm just going to draw all my poses out and I'm going to play it. And as you can see, you know, it's it's stepped animation. It's not super fluid, but there's enough information where you can get the sense of motion, the sense of movement. It makes it easier to read when I've already described my up and down poses, my, my bouncing ball method of animating. I'm numbering my keys and making a timing chart so you guys can see how I think about this animation. Now, again, the dance cycle that I've animated is way longer than the initial 13 frames. It's like about two seconds. It's about like 48 frames because I'm having the character do different poses every time it comes up, every time it comes down. 
and there's a variety of that but at the end of the day it goes back to the first frame you know i just wanted to show you guys that you can keep extending the cycle as long as you want and so that the loop isn't too boring it isn't just like one movement for this one it's multiple movements but it's still on beat now, I actually thought about straight aheading from one key post to the other, but I'm going to do it similar to how we did the reference pass, which of course is trying to figure out our breakdowns and our other extremes. As the character transitions from its up and down poses, it's speeding up, but as it comes back from its down pose to its up pose, it's starting to slow down. So it's going to create a nice bouncing ball effect, a nice quick motion as it comes back up. Now the breakdowns is sort of where I figure out indications of overlapping actions where the arms maybe flail or delay. Maybe there's a bit of movement in the ears. Maybe there's a bit of a head turn as it transitions from up and down to down and up poses. As you can tell, I'm not really using the light table. I'm not using onion skinning because I tend to, I prefer flipping between my drawings just so that I can feel the movement and I'm flipping between my key drawings, so the thing, the reason why I flip is that I can see the motion and movement, I can see uh, things in a spatial level, and I highly encourage it if you're still just doing your key poses and your breakdowns. But yeah, as you can see, I'm having fun with it, I'm having the character kick at the air, I'm having the character, you know, do rabbit ears with its hands, I'm having the character probably turn its body in different directions just to give it a bit more variety instead of just going up and down. Maybe I'll indicate a bit of movement in the tail, maybe I'll have the whiskers sort of overlap. These are just things that I can implement in my breakdown stage or my second keys. So I'm going to play it just with the keys and the breakdowns and it already looks sort of animated. I mean, sure, some drawings hold way longer than others, but other than that, you can feel the beat, you can actually feel the movement. And from here, it's really just all about in-betweening. Now, I'm not really going to talk much about in-betweening because it's really just an extra level of making your animation as smooth as possible or, you know, maybe adding things like favoring if you wanted to delay some things so one key pose reads better than the others. Now, I'm doing my in-betweens in blue so you guys can see that these are just in-betweens. These are just like the drawings that will just add more smoothness to the drawings. Now, because some of these movements are still big and dramatic, I still flip between my drawings rather than turn on the, the light table, but when the drawings are too close to each other, that's when I turn on uh, my light table, just so that I can just, you know, draw in between the lines that I see visually. At that point, the spacing is so small that it just begs for it. But even when you're in betweening, don't just draw in between the lines. If you need to, flip between your different drawings just so that you can see if things need to be favored, if things need to be delayed, it doesn't need to be evenly spaced out. So yeah, that's a simple no reference animated dance that I did. And the way I went about it is I was really just trusting my own instincts rather than just trying to figure out the mechanics or the technical aspects of the animation. That stuff can be figured out later on. And I feel like a lot of those skills that I talked about can be translated into more sophisticated or complicated animation, maybe longer takes, maybe stuff that isn't necessarily just a simple bobbing up and down loop. And in most cases, you're going to want to use references for some of these more complicated dances. So let's say you found live action reference of some person dancing. Break that video down by looking at the up poses, the down poses of your reference. And then see if you can translate that into your key poses for animation. But yeah, there's so much to talk about this stuff, but you know, not right now. Anyways, thanks, bye. Interested in learning hand-drawn animation or learning how to finish an animated shot from beginning to end? Have a look at the store where you'll find the complete introduction to 2D animation video course, tutorials, and other resources. Learn classical animation approaches, drawing, lectures, techniques, and other process videos. Visit the store through the link in the description below.